Got the bin opened up and cleared out. Nate 2.0 is going to take this truck down to the ethanol plant when he gets back and I'm going to take his empty truck, fill it up with soybeans so we can get the floors of some of the soybean bins clear. Dad and Jim and Alan have already started combining about five miles south of here so they're moving soybeans right now, taking them to the local grain elevator. And it's a rat race here making sure everything's functioning at the beginning of harvest but hey, we're in it. You getting that thing back together? Yep. Working on it, huh? Yep. And I think we're done with this. Hey, quit. Jim, do you know how many pounds are in the cart? Um, to be good if you knew how many were in there when we started unloading, we'll kind of see what the with weight comes out with the cart and the scale ticket. Into the next bin. We are not going to be carrying any soybeans over this year because there's not financial carry in the market. So we're going to get all these out of here. So I got to get this power sweep going. So when these shifter rods for the gearbox inside there, they sit for about a year before between runnings of that sweep. So they get a little bit stuck. Once they're free, they're free but we got to get them free. So they give us a round pipe to pull on with no handle or anything. It's a genius design, it really is. They're all pretty much like that. I hate you, I hate you. You got to get down to that cover that's behind the sump, right? Okay. I got beans in there now, it's run down to it, so I'll have to shovel a bunch to, to get that cover open, but I'll get in there then and see if those are what's, what's going on. Grain bins are so fun. Here's what we think we've got. There's a set of gears behind the sump, on the floor down here that I gotta get into that are probably broken. But, it's a lot of work to get that clear. Remember just a few minutes ago when I thought I was pretty much done in the grain bins? At least the combine is moving again. Somebody's got to put out some fires and do some grunt work. I'm going to wait till the end of this video to announce something really cool that Becky and I are doing to help people out when it comes to grain bins and entrapment rescue stuff. I'm going to talk about that at the end of this video because it might get a little bit windy, but make sure you check out the end here where I announce what we're going to do to try to help out with some of the issues that come with grain bin and grain bin safety. Yeah, it's going to be a while. I'll get some plywood in there and shovel down to the floor and get that cover off and see what I can find. Are you girls excited to go do some horseback riding at the neighbors? Yeah! yeah. And they're not neighbors. Yeah, yeah they are. Well, this was unexpected. Hello, did you guys get any rain down there? No, not yet. I saw lightning just north of us. Yeah, I think it's going to stay north. Because I just, uh, I'm just south of Kensington now, and it's mostly north. Well, the rain stopped them. I'm going to be taking over for Dad, because he's got to head back for a bit here and get his new knee up. His newly rebuilt knee is not supposed to be bent and doing nothing for too long he's also not supposed to be walking for too long or sitting for too long or laying for too long so we just keep him moving from one place to the next easy places because we don't want to wreck the new knee are they running okay these are pretty good here much better than the last field yeah but there's spots still a hill play hill there down quite a bit too dry you know i don't like to be rushed jim Now that's better than what I was combining two days ago. That's what I like to see. Jeez. That's it? Yeah. I made like four rounds. I know, I'm pretty quick, but uh... Seemed like it. Apparently he didn't want too much time to rest his leg. He just enjoys being in the combine and he knows I need to get that grain bin going.
You just holding that trailer in place? Yeah, I don't want to roll away. Yeah, well that's good. Somebody's got to do it. Oh, look, a little rain. Huh. I'll have to wait until this passes before I can pull beans out of here. Hopefully it's not raining at the field. Pretty sporadic today, wasn't supposed to do this. Unfortunately, it stopped raining, so I gotta go in there. Well, it took a lot of shovel work here to get these boards where they're happy. But here's what I've got to get under this, the cover. So this is the sump here that takes it in. This is the end of the sweep. This is the cover I've got to get under to get to the gears and the chain. So there's just some bolt heads down in there. I'll go grab what I need. Just so I look cool. There we go. I'm gonna try to keep the grain out of this hole as much as I can. We'll see how successful I am at that. Okay. I'm gonna lose all the screws too. Come on. Oh, you son of a gun. So this one over here broke, which is pretty standard procedure, but I know, I know what to do about that. Make use of the tools that we have to break things. Whoa, she's holding better than she should be. You would think I'd have a real pry bar in here, but I don't. There we go. Okay. Stay. Okay, I'm not a bin expert, and these are all a little bit different, but this chain is really tight and really dry but I believe that is the arm down there that's supposed to push this to lock these gears into place. I'm doing the best I can here, sitting on my knees with a headlamp holding the camera. I don't see anything broke. I also don't see anything that's probably gonna wanna move that easily. So I'm gonna run this center sump empty and see if I can get a better look at why that chain is so tight like that. I can't see a lot more because that chain is well covered up, <coughs> but bean dust is starting to get to me. What I know is this needs to move more than the quarter inch or so that I can move it. Hmm. Okay. I can pretty well say at this point that the dealy boppers are spinning even when the dealio tutors not lined up, but the thingamajig must be catching on the Husker donut. I actually think this shaft that comes in right here, this is the, I guess I'd call it the shifting rod that connects the sweep to it. It's just on a pin here. If I can eliminate this rod, then I'll know if the gearbox is working and maybe it's this rod that's hung up. Well, I got it disconnected and it does move fine. So then maybe perhaps it is in this. It would appear that way. I'm having finding some progress here. If I get mad at it enough with the pry bar, I can get this to move. So I'm halfway in gear at the moment, and it's gonna it's gonna move. But I've got to get mad at it. What it needs on it is penetrating oil. WD-40. WD-40 makes a good penetrating oil. We'll get that in here and cover everything. And that chain needs some chain lube for sure. All right, you got that engine running yet? Nope. Working on it. Just needing an oil apparatus. Penetrating, and look at that. A couple of back and forths. It's still a little snug going this way. It's like something's catching there, but it goes, it 
opens easy. Now, I got it freed up. I was just moving, I was just literally just moving it by hand. Now I got it freed up. Something catches there. So I can move it by hand. I still got this rod off because, well, because I can't get it back on. So I'm gonna put it in gear. And I'm gonna leave it in gear. When it comes to self-tapping screws, it's really the thought that counts anyway. I'm gonna let you guys watch the sweep while I kick the lever on out here, so let me know if it doesn't kick in. Hallelujah! I can run that cover not screwed down for a little while here. We'll just, uh, I'll have to make sure I get to it before the sweep gets to that point, but I'm gonna get the sweep rolling here. Jeez. You okay? Hey, hey, are you all right? You okay? Time to gather my belongings. Jordan? Oh, not Jordan. Scotty Pippen. What are you doing? Nothing. Nothing. Did you girls have fun at your horse riding class? Yeah. Yeah. Except yeah. for the time all the girls were hiding in the basement the whole time because the lights were yeah, and ring and they were afraid of the storm. They, they were afraid were of the storm? The and my face people. was feeling sweaty. Your face was feeling sweaty? Yeah. That's good. It's a good hard and horsey finally ride. Finally it started, stopped because Kaylee and Aubrey prayed. Yeah, and me Oh, twice. oh really? Yeah, and twice. Stopped. Oh, good job. And as you guys can see, I've spent quite a bit of time in the grain bins lately. It's not something I want to do. It's not something any farmer ever really wants to do. But sometimes you have to do it. So you do it as safely as you possibly can. It's a part of having the uh, grain systems. Look at these dogs. They just can't leave each other alone. Anyway, grain bins are dangerous. But a lot of farmers have them. A lot of farmers use them the way we do for marketing. Um, On-farm storage has been really, really good for us and the people in this area. When you, when, when you play the markets correctly, it can be really good. And sometimes uh, the grain goes bad or you have whatever type of situation where you have to go in there. Sometimes things break. Sometimes you have to be inside grain bins. Unfortunately, here in the upper Midwest the last couple of years, there's been some big issues. We've lost a lot of farmers to entrapments inside grain bins and, and safety issues inside grain bins. I'm guilty of it myself. I'm not always as safe as I should be. Um, so I want to encourage everybody out there to make sure that you are being as safe as you can be when you're inside those grain bins or around the sites or just farming in general. Uh, it can be a dangerous job. We all know that. So here's what Becky and I want to do. Here's what the millennial farmer wants to do. This is coming straight from Becky and I. We want to give back to the farmers. We want to help out. We want to help some of these volunteer uh, fire departments and volunteer first responders and volunteer organizations across the upper midwest here that help farmers in times of need like that. It is raining really good outside. It's a couple days later. So the ending of this video is coming a couple days later. So if the dogs aren't fighting, it's pouring. So that's the noise you guys are hearing. We're going to give back $5,000 to these organizations that help out farmers. And the money is going to be used for either equipment for grain bin or confined space rescue stuff or and or training for, for helping people in those types of situations, emergency situations. So we wanna give back. There's an email link down below. Um, give me a second, I'll find out exactly what that email is here. I keep forgetting. Giving back at mnmillennialfarmer.com. Giving back at mnmillennialfarmer.com. That is the email, the link is down below. So if you are a part of one of these organizations or you know somebody locally to you that needs some rescue equipment or some training for situations like that, let us know, shoot us an email. Obviously, I hope we're gonna get uh, an awful lot of people contacting us saying they can use equipment and training. That's the idea here. We can't give to everybody. We haven't decided exactly how we're gonna pick who gets the money. We haven't decided how many departments or how many different first responder groups or how exactly we're gonna div going to divvy it up. But you guys go ahead, shoot us the email, let us know what you think, and uh, we're gonna put that money out there. What we ask in return, uh, this spring when we, when we did the farm rescue uh, thing that we did with John Deere, where we gave money to Farm Rescue, which is the organization that gives back to farm families in crisis, 
We wanted to hit, the goal was I believe 500,000 subscribers by a certain date. I'm not asking for anything like that, um, but it would be cool to hit 700, 750,000 subscribers. Hey, right now as I record this, we're almost to 600. So it would be awesome if we could, if we could gain. But I'm not gonna say you need to subscribe. Um, I don't charge you any money, nobody charges you money, nobody sends you an email, but only half the people that watch my videos are actually subscribed. That means half of you out there have not hit that subscribe button and all it does is help me in the algorithm. If you throw me a thumbs up, that little thumbs up, that like button, throw a comment down below, I can't get back to all those, but all those types of things help us. Share these videos with your friends, tell them about us, I appreciate the support. It's, it's gotten us to where we are, obviously. I mean, without the people that watch this channel, we have nothing. So help us out, um, boost us in the algorithm, get us some subs, please. Uh, that's all I ask for. It doesn't matter either way. We're gonna donate no matter what. So share these videos around. Hey, Didge. Hey, Didge. Share these videos around, um, get us out there, and by the end of Harvest, let's see where we're at. I think that's all I got. I think that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Let's do something cool again.